Thank you for clicking on this video and just to preface this, this part is going to be graphic, but it is a very important part of the story of me taking a wild boar and making several dishes out of it. This is going to be a 10 part series, 10 episodes, so hang on tight and if you are squeamish, please click off now. Okay, I know that was kind of hard to watch and I just want to preface this by saying I'm not laughing because of shooting the pig. Um, you'll notice here I'm kind of laughing and what I'm doing is I'm having a um, conversation with the hunter. We literally just had to drag this thing up a 60 yard steep hill. So just to give you a little context, the, there was two wild boars. One was the demo and it was a girl and basically the hunter was giving me a demo on how they skin it in the wild. This was a lesson that I was learning. So I was in charge of the male boar. These two pigs were uh, caught in the wild as piglets and then raised in captivity. Now I got them because, uh, you know, my friend decided that he would much rather I take them and process them than them be um, used for training hunting dogs. I'm a professional chef, but I've only broken down commercial pigs. So this was a passion project of mine. I wanted to actually shoot and kill a pig and then from start to process, do the whole process, do the whole thing. So that's why we are shooting this video. This is my first time doing this and there's a lot of things I would change for the next time. But if you notice, I basically was told to cut around the ankles and then this is how you remove the skin. As you can see, what I'm doing is I'm just gently removing the skin and peeling down. And then what he is doing is he is uh, just, you know, cutting around the private parts to make sure that uh, no poop gets on the skin and none of the entrails uh, leak out anywhere, right? And as you can see, we have hung it up by its feet and basically we're just going to town. And this is um, basically how he taught me. And so that's what, that's what I'm doing. So the way they do it commercially is crazy. And for me, I learned so much by doing this by myself. There's a couple things you have to do. You have to get around uh, on the on the boars, which are the male, and the sow is the female. On the boar, there is a thick like skin on the back, right? It's you know that's where you get the razor back from. But I'm telling you, it's like an armor plate, and it was so hard to cut through. One more note to self, you know, you notice the head is off. I uh, made the decision to take the head off so I could drain some of the blood. Next time I'll cut the jugular. The thing is, is I didn't know where and when to cut the jugular because I've never done it before. So it was more comfortable for me just to cut the head off. With the female pig, which we'll see in the next couple scenes, we did not cut the head off or drain the blood and it made an impact on what the meat looked and tasted like. Basically what he's telling me and what he's holding is the urine sac. And what you want to do is you want to be really careful around this area. Obviously, you don't want to get piss all over your meat. And you also have to be careful with all of the guts. And note to self, if you see all the blood around the shoulders and the rib cage, that that's because we didn't drain the blood first. So I would highly recommend that you cut the juggler and let the let the pig drain like all the blood, all of it. I'm not going to lie. I'm this is me being the curious chef and I'm like, hey, I want to keep this liver. This liver looks so healthy. And I'll be honest, um, because these wild pigs were in captivity, all it all looked healthy. But anyway, here we go. So the guts are out. Everything's cleaned and tightened up. This is the first time I'm ever taking down a wild boar and I am moving fast and furious. The shoulders are really easy to move. And now, and as you notice, basically once you get behind the shoulder blade, you can just take the shoulders right off. And here, here I go, I'm taking off the back loin. And I think this is one of the prized possessions on the actual pig. So, you know, you have to be careful and not destroy it. And what's great is I already know how to do this. So it was actually kind of really easy for me. The only awkward part was obviously it's suspended in midair. So I don't have that much leverage as I would like. What I would do is I would cut the ribs and then put the rest on a uh, table or a butcher block to go ahead and fillet off the loins. They don't teach this stuff anymore. They don't teach this in culinary school. They don't teach whole animal butchery. And I think it's really important to know the parts of the animal. And so right here, this is where um, if I were to leave the ribs on, this would be the pork chop. If I, you know, what I'm taking off right now, this is the boneless pork, ch pork chop. It's also known as the backstrap. They, the hunters call it that. Um, but to me, it's pork loin. Okay. And there's two on every animal. And so I'm going to quick work on the, the next one. It's super easy. I did one. So I'm already on to the next one. This is really unique. So inside right here are the two tender loins. Okay. And I know that sounds weird and they're kind of small. They're about, you know, eight to 10 inches, but they're super tender. Anyway, the pork tenderloins are on the inside, right next to, right above the rib cage. And as you can see, I already, boom, knew where it was, knew how to take it out because I've done that before. And now I'm gonna go ahead and take the ribs off. I wanted to save these ribs only because I saw a bunch of meat on them. These boars were 
um, fed hog feed, which is, you know, a growth feed. Okay, boom, I'm taking off the ribs and some of the belly. I think the belly meat on here was really good. I actually got a lot. So all that's left on here is the backbone and the two legs, okay? I was super excited because, you know, I've never done this before and it was really cool to document it. And I highly recommend if you know any hunters or if you have anybody that hunts whole animal, you know, go through this process. It's worth it. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all of these parts back to my house. Okay. I have a Yeti cooler. I packed them in ice. First, I put it in a plastic bag, a black trash bag, and then put it in ice. And then I did the same at my house to make sure I got the meat chilled to below 40, 41 degrees. But listen, this is going to be it for this video. Please stay tuned for the next episode. You're going to see me create dishes with all of these products. So make sure you hit that subscribe button.